Hey there, everybody. I'm just doing a little test here of how YouTube Live works. It seems like my focus is still set exactly where I want it to be. Sometimes the camera will do some shenanigans and change all of your settings or go back to default, something like that. I don't think there'll be too many people in the chat here since I tried to kind of do this in a stealthy way. The idea is you can see there's a whole bunch of different stuff on the table, all kinds of things. It's like it's all in reverse too. But this is one that's kind of in the closing stages. I was going to put some leaves on that. There's other things that are more in the beginning stages, like some of these guys. I've got a uh, vehicle here that I wanted to show you how you can get it to look like this guy over here. So I'm just going to paint here and talk. We've got some other stuff like this. This is a little kind of a lesson in not just object source lighting, but the fluorescent paints, even some of the secret weapon heat paints. Basically, just kind of an idea so you can see what it's like to have a million chainsaws being juggled at the same time. And I'm going to start off here just with some of these guys that I'm using in my next battle report. Actually, a lot of this stuff is for my next battle report. It's going to be the Bridge to Nuvion. And you can maybe imagine why I've got these boats out here just by the title itself kind of self-explanatory. We got these for the German troops so they can tr cross a river. So what I just threw out there, this is something I just tried for the first time last night in a live session. So that's secret weapon engine grime. And what I noticed is that it, it starts up pretty thick, but just like all the other secret weapon weathering paints, you can see you can make that nice and watery and turn it into a really interesting wash. These are just going to be clearly not a lot of fancy colors. It's even on camera, they're basically just going to show up as gray. And the idea is here, since I'm going to be doing a lot of other beginning steps. Oh, hey there. Oh, it's the, it's the eccentric man. Hey there, Ken. How's it going? Uh, actually, speaking of YouTube channels, you can check out Ken. He's got all kinds of fantastic bolt action battle reports. Speaking of bolt action, and he's now doing some YouTube tutorials of his own too, so you can check those out. He's got lots of fun unboxings. Hey there, Ryan. Um, yeah, I, I don't know what my settings are on this because I've never tried one of these before, and I set it to. I think it was low latency so that I could see replies a little bit better. Uh, yeah, oh, he is. so Ken's going to be painting a 38 TL, so that's right. That's right. Uh, yeah, yeah, go check out Ken's stuff, uh, especially, you know, the battle reports there. It's really helpful if you're looking to get sort of a tournament you know, checking out how a tournament list might work so you can see his lists evolve over time as he practices and stuff. So that's really, really helpful. I just, I love, well, in general, the secret weapon, these weathering paints, because you can just, you can see here real quick, not a lot of fuss. Let's get these two compared. So even there, it's kind of giving it a little bit of a shade right there. A little bit of a shade, and it's going to dry super matte. That's the other neat thing about the secret weapon paints is that they all dry extra matte because they are supposed to be weathering. And this is what I painted last night in a live stream here. This is going to be in that next battle report. And I was using, again, just the secret weapon weathering paints. wasn't using my normal oil paints. So I'm going to throw out some more of this engine grime here because I'm going to use it in more than just the boats. I'm also going to use it on these bases and to do a little bit of pre-shading on these guys here. So I'm going to see if there's any kind of 
settings on here. I don't really see a whole bunch of different settings. So I think I'm just going to have to kind of go, go with what I've got here. You can see how, so we did that on the boat. Let's do that on this guy here. Might even throw out a secondary one here. Where's my brown liner paint? That's from Reaper Miniatures. Really love that. Throw that out there and what the heck, let's get a different secret weapon color out here. Is this old rust? Yep. Just to give it a little, a little bit of a different look. So I'm going to do, you saw how this is working as we let this dry. I'm going to pop over here. You can see we're doing the same thing, creating some washes out of this. And so that doesn't get too boring. I give that a reddish feel. Let's get some brown in there. And I just I move around and I make sure to just shift the color every so often. It's really not super noticeable once you do all your other painting over the top of it. But it's just a nice way to kind of get the ball rolling. So here on this cloak, I'm going to do the same thing. Let's get a little bit of dark here. It looks like we're painting the whole thing out. But once we hit it with the magic sponges, which are just real super cheap makeup sponges, and I'll throw the, the little bag out for you in a second just so you can see what that's like. And you can see we're not really not staying in the lines. We are trying to let gravity do its thing. So I'll grab our sponge here. And now you can see we have a little bit more of a reddish look on this side, a little bit more of a grayish look on the other. So here's a clean sponge and you can see how much of it it's taken off but it still leaves enough behind and here is the bag got these on amazon I'm sure you can get them just at a lot of other stores just a quick little bag right there got some other sponges that i like to use these are i'll let you get in see it's still picking up stuff these will let you pick off me a little bit more of that wash, but in a more targeted area. So see, I just maybe I just want to grab this part right here. Oh, oh, thanks. Yeah, it's it's too bad that the bunker closed. We've been reminiscing about that a lot lately. I mean, we remember when we first started going there, and that it was basically like a GW headquarters store. And they were training employees there. They had all the, what do you want to call them, display miniatures and armies there. That was that was really a neat place. And there's never really been anything like that. So I'm going to throw some more of that old rust out there. Because now that I'm on the flesh tone side here, I want to get a little more red into this. These, a couple of these guys are sort of a wasteland type thing, kind of a Mad Max or whatever. And each one of them basically is supposed to be different colors, except one element was supposed to be common to all of them. So some guys maybe have like a bandana that's red. Maybe one has a shirt that's red. I think one of them had sort of a flamethrower type thing. So I made the fuel can red. I think this one, there was one that had a flamethrower thing. So obviously that was red. So it was a way to kind of sneakily put in some kind of common color. And you can see we've tinted this a little bit. All I'm trying to do is just set up subsequent layers. And you can see how watery all this is. Let's get this, hit this gun here, whatever weapon that is. Yeah, and it looks like we're wiping out everything. And all we're doing is setting that up. I think so I'm gonna just take some of that away. Can take as much away or as little away as I want. Nice thing with these sponges. 
and cut that away, get to a fresh part of it, and we've also changed the shape of it. So here we go. And let's compare it to something more like what we started with. So you can see, got a little bit of a difference. <clears throat> yeah, all of the secret weapon stuff is all acrylic based. Depending on how long this goes, I might bring out some oils too, because I also want to try my new set of oil brushers. And <clears throat> of course, I still have my paints that I, oil paints that I took out of the tube and stuck in my oh, nail polish containers here. Some of these things like this and these boats, well, I need those, like I was saying, to film that next battle report. That was actually supposed to be filmed last week, but with all the rain we had, the, the table had a bunch of other stuff that was taken off the floor. So let's just get this other boat here. And these I built myself. So this is just matte board. The inner tube sections is mostly just tin foil and a little layer of epoxy sculpt over the top and milliput. This is just some rope. I think it's from Gale Force 9. Because sometimes when you need stuff in a hurry, it's just faster to make it yourself. I made these probably, well, I tried to make them actually the same scale. I saw a miniature company actually sells these things. Tried to make them the same scale as theirs. So I can get, oh, maybe about four guys in here. I figure that's good enough to represent a unit. I'm just going to throw this in here. And I'm going to add a little blue liner to it. See, all this stuff is acrylic based here. Just to, because sometimes, well, with deadlines, things just have to dry. And if I want to start filming battle reports tomorrow, well, I had, can't have too many wet oil paints. So I see we're going to do the same thing here. And the reason I'm using this sponge is you can see it just kind of forms itself to the shape. But it's not taken, it's only taken the stuff off of the high areas and not out of the crevices. You can see the difference that it makes when you actually dab some of that away. So let's do a little bit more here. We'll leave these guys off to the side to dry. And then we'll, I'm just going to add some some kind of brownish colors to the ropes, uh, just to give them a little extra flavor of uh, realism, whatever you want to call that. This is another liner paint that they made. They made this one for me, hence the handwritten label. Oh, thanks. Uh, let's see. And I turn around. Oh, what's up, man? Oh, thanks a lot. Yeah, I wasn't quite sure how YouTube Live would work. I actually was on the Styrene Syndicate hangout last night, and we spent hours trying. They, they tried to tell me, okay, Jim, just do this, do this, and do this, and it should work. Some of it did. And then when I went to go live, all of a sudden it was all different again, which I wasn't surprised. I decided to just do a straight up YouTube live because I didn't want to have to deal with setting up my, uh, not OBS, my XSplit, because that would have just been kind of a pain dealing with that. Plus, I wanted you to just see the big old mess that's out here. What you can't see on camera are the mm, 80 and somewhere between 80 and 120 miniatures that are all in the queue, in the pipeline, on the conveyor belt. And then just after I wipe this away, I'll show you what I mean. Kind of a typical day in Wampleville. Here we go. Let's put this in front of the camera. So there's about six boxes like this within a two-foot radius of me. There's just tons and tons of stuff. We got these gals here on sticks. Oh, we've got 
We got busts over here. There's all kinds of stuff. Some of these are set up for Facebook Lives. Some of them are for new YouTube tutorials. So I've got this red sitting over Santa. I've got this nice sheet of washes at my disposal. I don't know if this guy's gonna be more like an orc. So maybe not so much with the skin tones, but let's have something a little more brownish here. Again, it looks like, wait a minute, what the heck is Jim doing? He's just annihilating all that pre-shading that he did. And I'm sure, sure it looks that, look how messy that is. Look at that, just slapping this stuff all over the place. But one thing you can see is I kind of started at the top and I'm working my way down. And the idea is that gravity starts to work in my favor. Now this was oils. That's got a whole different capillary action. It tends to get down into the crevices more than the water does because it's just, it's it's got this thinner, especially when you've got it thinned down with some of the white spirits. So now I'm just getting a little grayish. All right, you're again slapping all over the whole thing, working as fast as I can. And then poof, take this. And then we start to reveal that sheeting, the pre-sheeting underneath. You can see just how much is being taken off of this. Because I worked relatively fast. And get in here, take away a good, good amount of the excess. And remember my other sponges. Let's say I want to get a little more, a little more of that off of there. See how it's taking it off. But now, got some really nice deep shadows in there that I can work with, but they're all different colors. Some of these shadows are tinted a little more bluish gray. Some are tinted a little more towards the brown. Some a little more tan. I could have taken green liner paint, done the same thing. So I can see I've got a little bit of a gap there, so I'm just going to toss a quick wash in there. Boy, I've watched so many of Ken's battle reports, I keep wanting to say pop. That, that's probably going <laughs> to pop up in one of my battle reports. So I apologize if I steal a catchphrase from you there, Ken. That, that may just have to be a thing. Because when you're taking a shot at somebody, you just have to sometimes take a pop at them too. So he is pretty well set up. There are times where I'll just start working into this and kind of take advantage of some of the shadow areas that are still wet. So we can compare him now to this fantasy figure here. Again, a little more, just a little more tone on him. So let's get this guy maybe set up the same way. Since I've got all this out, I'm gonna throw a little more of this. This is getting to be a new favorite. It's engine grime, and you can see we have not used it on any engine yet. That's kind of how I roll. I tend to use things completely not in the way they're supposed to be used. And that's, I guess it's another thing too, I try to emphasize for folks is just because it says liner paint or clear paint or, weathering paint, you know, I have to just restrict yourself to using it that way only. So I got some of that brown liner. You can see I'm turning this into a, into a wash. Also, I'm gonna start my way at the top and we're gonna start working down. Again, taking advantage of gravity. So this was more of a, like a Facebook Live session. I just would have had one figure out here. And I just would have been working on that. Would have had all the different supplies out, like my brushes here. If you're wondering what brushes I'm using, 
It is these. It's my craft brushes. Yeah, look at that. Five bucks. There's a dozen of them in there. And these are rugged brushes. Take all kinds of punishment. When they're pristine, they have a really nice point. When they've been worn down just a bit, then I can use them as a filbert brush, which you'll see me do a little bit later. So just like before, working my way from the top, from the top down. Now this cloak, it's actually gonna be a blue cloak because it's gonna be winter time. So why not tint that blue? So that's the blue liner. All right, and wham, right there. Doesn't look very blue because we've just added a nice dark color. This is barely even watered down at this point. Going back to that grayish. And just, I'm gonna leave the shield not with a wash on it at this point. I'm going to grab my sponges here. Just before things have a chance to dry. So see, you can, I got a little different shape here. Looks like you can see that. So I wiped that away, but now we've got some sheeting in the crevices. I know it's a little bit shiny on camera at this point. I think that's the other reason I didn't want to use the oils here because I didn't want people to see a whole bunch of shiny paint. We're doing the same thing here. It's just it's getting down into those crevices. It's just reaching down. I'm gonna grab another one of my makeup sponges here. And look at how much of that came off. And we're just starting to bring back, even on the blade here. I can almost I'm just kind of appreciating that. And bring off just enough here on that highlight side. Same thing on the fur here. You can sort of clean out these sponges if you wanted to get more than one use out of them, but they're not exactly what I would say expensive. So most of the time I just kind of use it and lose it. So I think we've just about, this bottom side, I'm not going to do too much. Take away a little bit there. Yeah, I know last night during the Hangout, someone asked what these are stuck to. It's just a dead paint jar, an old Reaper paint jar. And I used some blue tack and stuck it on there. That's all that is. In this case, it was just, I had a couple of, these jars that I wasn't using, and it just happened to fit inside the tread. Let's get down to the bottom part of this base. If you look on my Facebook page and look to some of my past Facebook Live episodes, you'll see me doing it's called Bark and Branch. And that's actually all this stuff is. It's tree bark. Different kinds of tree bark give you a different look. Some look more like slate. Some look more like lava. This is sort of, I think it's a basic kind of a pine bark. A friend of mine down in Arkansas sends this up to me, but we've also collected some here. And we live, we live in the city. A lot of times there's branches and bark just laying there on the ground. Why not use it? So I'm going to go back to that sepia liner, wherever that thing happened to be hiding. I'll put some of that out because that was kind of fun. And seeing that jammed dropper bottle, a couple of ways. A pin, this is my new method though. I dump them into these containers right here. It's a flip top, it's a huge nozzle. It never clogs and I can just go like so, and there's a drop of paint. And it closes again, no clogging. Can almost fit two jars in a, one of those containers. Again, they're just pennies on the dollar from Amazon. And you can bet I'm gonna get a bunch more of those. And you're gonna see a lot more of my 
favorite paint colors most commonly used, which is not a lot. You're going to be seeing those in those containers. So again, let me grab it's another one from the same set. So you can see now, this one, when we first grabbed it, it looked like it had some shading, but now we have some nice pre-shading on this. So some nice established darks. Now let those three dry. I still have this on the table. I have yet another figure. This is for a big blood bowl team. So you can see we've got, now let's get this up so you can see it. I'm gonna put some pre-shading on the base and some on the witch elf itself. Again, I, I tried to pick Normally, I would be working on a whole bunch of things just from one army group team. I thought, well, maybe that might get a little boring until people kind of get used to it. So I thought, well, let's just grab a couple of this, a couple of that, a couple of rubber boats. Let's see how that all works. So yeah, if there's any weird sound things or the picture's not super sharp, this is one of the reasons I wanted to do YouTube Live is it's supposed to let you do up to 720, 1080p or at that resolution. But again, this is first time around. So here, just going in with my new sponges. And I want to get a little more precise is what I'm removing on these skulls here. Because can you imagine trying to paint each of these skulls from black primer? And I guess I sh should answer on the primer. I am using these Badger Stano Res primers. He's got 12 different colors. This is kind of a favorite here. It's a tan type of color. Obviously, it'd be fantastic for desert vehicles because I don't know anybody who's watching this that has any kind of desert or Italian themed vehicles at all like Ken. Yeah, I watch you can watch Ken's Italians in action on his battle reports. That's that's another army that I'm working on. Actually I've got them all at this stage. And I, I basically call it primer painting. So here, I'm throwing some blue liner on here because ultimately the skin tone is going to be sort of a bluish gray. And the hair, who knows, it may have to be a pink type here. I'll have to look at a reference. But all I'm trying to do is, again, get a basic pre-shade on this. So we're almost... Finish slathering this thing with horrible washes. Oh my gosh. We've ruined it. It's it's just destroyed until we start to reveal all the shading. Depending on the shape of the figure, you may have to, again, I can take off most of it with this. I have to I have to dab it more than sweep it across. I can grab this sponge and start to remove with a little more precision. This was a another interesting conversation that I've had with people at times. They, yeah, you know, I don't crawl out of bed because it's pretty much how I get out of bed in the morning and just start doing fancy freehand and intricate details. That would be a disaster because my brain hardly functions at all when I'm wide awake. So just having crawled out of bed is not the time to be, I don't know, say doing these little tiny shields here. So we wouldn't be doing that. I'll just do this sometimes well, for me, it may, it may be hours of doing this. But for you guys that are not doing this every day, 18 hours a day, seven days a week, you know, you've been at work, had to deal with kids and everything else, and 
this is sort of a nice way to work your way into. So maybe after doing this for 20 minutes or a half an hour, you kind of warm up. Just like if you were going to exercise, and go play some basketball or whatever, you would just want to warm up a little bit first. And once again, you can see the difference here between the two. And a little bit of pre-shading on that. So I'm going to get to this. And now this is what I wish, what I like about the using XSplit is I could have this photo reference up. So this is 7th Panzer Division, France, 1940, which works really well because all of my battle reports right now are for France, 1940. Yeah, I've already got one, like you saw. That, that's the old Warlord resin kit. This is the new plastic kit. And I assembled all three of them. But I thought, you know what? I, I've done everything in Dunkel Growl. Absolutely everything. So I threw out some brown liner, blue liner, and back to the engine grime. I move some of this stuff out of the way. I'm going to get my my SDK out of harm's way over there for the splatter, just like I did on the regular miniatures, and do the exact same process because people in, insist. They said, "Well, Jim, you must have you must do something different when you're working on large creatures or on vehicles." They're all just miniatures. The, the process is the same. It's either resin, or it's plastic, or it's metal, or sometimes all three at the same time. Now here with the vehicle, I'm gonna leave the back deck because I just, I can't work my way around fast enough. So there's a few natural stopping points here. And you can see I just kind of get to where a natural stopping point is. Sorry if I bump into the camera here every so often. Back to my sponges. Just going to pull away. If I was doing this in oils, some people might call this a filter. They might still call it a, a wash. But I use these kind of as part filter, part wash. You see here, that was all just flat before. Now you've got a little more, just by default, a little more shading there. And I try to always have a bunch of these sponges on hand. So now, see the top of that, and the side now has some shading. Same thing here on the headlight dome. This top part of the deck, pull some of it away. And I can always, I can go back in, I can do more. But what we're doing now is I throw out some more of that engine grime. It's the exact same thing we were doing on these gentlemen right here. Let's wash, water this down. Going to throw out some more brown liner. There we go. One thing I've noticed about oils, they just a little bit goes a longer way. And it, that's, I'm sure it's, you'll hear that magic word again, capillary action. You just, you can cover more with less. I've, <laughs> I think it was the last oil demo that I did. I covered this entire figure with what looked like to be the last vestiges of some dried oil paint. And it covered it no problem. It's just, well, it's oil versus water. They just have different properties. And you just you just factor that in, that's all. So here I'm actually using some of the sepia liner just to change the color around. Besides, it's the back deck. You know there's going to be lots of mud spatter there. So you can see already see how that's kind of going down this way. It's got, I call that sedimentary. That's kind of a watercolor thing. So I don't want to wipe too much of that away. I'm going to be a little bit careful about that. So I'm going to 
a little more gentle as I pull away this extra coat. So I'm going to grab a clean, clean sponge here and see how much of this I can save. And directional strokes. It's another thing. So I've got gravity working this way, right? The water is wanting to pull this way. So instead of dabbing like this and create watermarks, if I take this, sweep it down this way, what's happening? Look at that. There's, it's actually forming some streaks. So that's the other thing that I like about this method because, oh, what's one of the steps, a separate step that tank painter guys will do? It's streaking. Well, what if you could just have this process happen automatically as you're doing something else? It speeds things up. So you've already got kind of a little bit of streaking there. I can go in here, take some of that away, reveal some of the white underneath. Remember, there's going to be dust over this, going to be leaves. Yeah, let's take some of this away from the gray so that we can see the difference between our green and gray. That was the whole reason I did this color scheme. I'm going to go back to this and get into here. There's just lots of doodads. I don't want to snap those off. I'm just, I was glad to have these plastic kits because usually these tow hooks and everything else, those tend to be, of course, metal, just super glued to resin and really easy to snap off. So let's hit this undercarriage here. I don't think I'm going to do a lot with the inside of the wheels because, well, you guys can't see it. That's just not going to show up on camera. So we'll just leave that be. And it'll be more than fine for the battle report. So we'll just leave that as it is. So I'm going to let this, I don't want to be twirling this around. So I'm going to grab my turret here. Oh, thanks. Thanks for the share, John. And uh, I saw your concrete pour. It, it, it seemed like that all worked out real well. That was, I mean, it seemed like it was about a 30 foot diameter circle there that was being poured. So here we go. This is brown liner. Oh, a little bit of blue liner. It's all kind of mixing together at this point. And it, it, it looks like we're completely wiping out the shading. It's, it's like we've just gone to Dunkel Grau here. But once we hit it with the sponge, like you've seen a bunch of times, that'll all go away. But I tell you, the rivets on this were so much cleaner and easier to deal with than the rivets on, say, the old resin kit. Oh, my goodness. So I'm just going to go ahead and hit this whole thing. Bam. Grab me a sponge. Oh, wow. I, I actually, I guessed right. Because that I was trying to look for other things in the picture that just, I, okay, I know how big that is. And then I thought, oh, looking at that, that's got to be a one heck of a, that's got to be, you know, you think, well, it's just pouring concrete, but at something that size, um, I would imagine it has to be done in stages too. So speaking of stages, see, we got some pooling here. What am I going to do? I'm going to do this. But see, I don't wipe out everything. So actually, I've got myself some built-in streaks here. And do the same thing on this side. It looks like that does show up. So there's, oh, I got a little bit of streaking there. Take away some, leave some behind. It's so even here because of the direction that I pulled that sponge down. A little bit of streaking. And now on the top deck, poof, take some away, but let it. Pool and others. 
I'll try and paint the tank driver. It, I think you'll be able to see this one a little bit better than on that the other armored car because the uh, camera just wanted to keep focusing on the I think it's a 37 millimeter anti tank gun. So here we go. We got this, and as we let that dry a little bit, now now I can come back here and. I don't have to worry about this, some unauthorized flow from that. Let's do some blue liner here. Gonna emphasize even more the brown liner because, well, we're doing tracks and drive wheels. So we definitely wanna have some earth tones on that. See, I just keep mixing up these big old batches of washes. Let's do this. Guys, last night we're loving my number 12. Uh, yeah, this is the uh, very first one I've ever done. I I thought you had to use a third-party software. So here's here's where that came from. It's just like the green handle ones. But what's this, 15 bucks here. And there's about 36. Yep, 36 of them in there. So this is the number 12 round. It goes as small as a 6. But they said, yeah, Jim, you know, you don't have to use a third party. You don't have to use XSplit or OBS. It's ideal, a little more ideal to use that. But they showed me how I can just go ahead and use almost like a Facebook Live. You, know, you go onto YouTube and you just say, look, I want to go live. Give it a title. Click go. It was eerily similar. And... I guess, too, I wanted this to be a more of a longer, more chilled out session with Facebook Live. You just have to be charging through, and there's way more people in the chat room also. And it's a little hectic, and sometimes it's harder just to pass the information along. And I certainly couldn't just bounce around from one to the next. So here we go. You can see the difference. Whoops, it's in reverse again. And I've been adding a little more of the sepia here. And I take my sponge. I say I need I need me some new ones here. Let's just grab a few. And here. Just taking some of that away, leaving it into the crevices. See how much is coming off of there. Again, if I want a little more precision, let's move this down. Can use these sponges. Um, there's a couple of other shapes that I, had. I just kind of ran out of those. Now, Tracks wash, that's it's one of my favorites actually in the MIG ammo series of washes, but we're just gonna make our own. I think this is some uh, which rust color is this one? I think it is red rust, maybe. Back to that my brown liner. So we're just gonna basically make our own tracks wash. It's about this color. And then we have our tracks there. Take this, mix these two up like so. Get it to where you can see it. Oh, yeah. Uh, Matt can the. Let's see what are some. I'll, I'll pull out some of the other fun sponges because uh, there's some that are like for eyeliner and they're actually really good for, well, applying super precise trying to pull some things away. There's other things that are more almost like lipstick shaped. And those are really, also really neat. So you can see what I'm doing here. Not hitting the wheels, except for a few places. And I'm just getting my tracks. I flip this upside down here. Pop this in here. And 
I'm just going to get some down in here too while I got it. And let's water this down just a touch. I think this is on screen for you. It looks like it is. And now my Trax wash starts to become a little bit of dirt. I'll get the rubber on those with another secret weapon, conveniently enough, called tire black and I think rubber highlight and all that kind of neat stuff. So I'll grab our sponge again. Look at how much that's coming off. Just wipe away. Look at how much of that there is. And, but it still leaves plenty behind. I'm going to go like this, spread some of that around. I can take some away. Because I'd, I'd see the tank painter guys, and they would do this all in a bazillion different steps. They do one step and varnish, and another step and varnish, and that's fantastic. If you want to just paint the one vehicle, but most of us tend to have more things going on at once. Where, you know, if it's a scale model, that's one thing. Well, let's see. I remember the first Facebook Live. I, I'm trying to remember when the first one was. I have a feeling it was February or March of 2017. It had to be. And that's back then all you could do is use your phone. There was there was no way to use well this setup right here. This all came much later. So we've got this side here. Starting to look a lot more like a weathered thing, especially compared to poof that. Well, there's just not a lot going on. So I'm gonna do is let this dry. This, guess what? Everybody's favorite thing to do is make these exhausts rusty. So we're going to do that. And this is a fun thing about the secret weapon. There's some people, they see me doing this and they, they swear that I'm using oil paints. But if you go to the secret weapon website, Justin, uh, what does he call them? Two minute tutorials, I think. I'm just going to pop a little bit. Whoop, there it is. There's that word again. I'm going to grab me another rust color. So we've got, I think this is yellow rust. No, orange rust. And here's that red rust. I'm not, not put out quite as much. A little spot there. And this is the nifty thing that I saw Justin doing. We don't really need a lot of that. I'm going to do is mix some of this up. And while that's still wet, all I'm going to do is drop some of that on there. And the idea is you let it do its own thing. You're not really trying to manipulate this at all. Just leave it, whoops, do its own thing. Now I'm going to get an even brighter. Ah, here we go. So this one I think is yellow rust right here. And you can see as I have to pry open every single one of these containers, why it is my greatest desire to put all my paints into these things. It'll make life so much easier. So here we go. While that's still wet, just a just a dot of it there and the idea is that it's going to mix and mingle with what's there and if some of it's drier that's a good thing so see we got these spots here it's kind of yeah there now you can see a little more it's a little more textured there yep Yep, Cujo, they're makeup sponges. I'll show you the bag again. I think there's 100 in here. I got this on Amazon. There was three bags of 100. And here's the other ones here. Those, I think they also come in packages of 100. And I can even 
dab away at that a little bit to manipulate it. These can you can even use them for that the chipping stuff. You can see how it's kind of uneven here on the edge, and you can go along the edge and and do some chipping that way too. Let's see. Is there any other uh, question there? Yeah. Yeah, I, I was just glad that, uh, that Father's Day worked out really well. And I guess for anyone here, to also thanks for all the, the birthday greetings and stuff. That was that was really cool to get those. And of course they started before midnight on the 18th because of some of my Australian buddies. So here, absentmindedly, while it was out there, I just grabbed some of my Rustco, and even with this big old brush. Yeah, well, phew, this this stuff is still from, some of this is from last night. At first, I tried to, well, as you can imagine, get a glove on this hand. It just didn't work. Could not hold the brushes the way I wanted to. It just, it was a bummer. I was kind of hoping to not have quite as much paint all over me, but, well, at least I got it on one hand. This is really more to protect the miniatures from me than to protect me from the paint. So I'm just popping this on there. Let's grab ourselves a different brush. And... Get it where you can see it. And, oh, wait. You mean rust streaks? And I've seen people do this, obviously, with the oils. But you know what? It's possible to do it with acrylics. Ah, here's a new line. It's like comedy. Timing is everything. Bam. I just got me a new catchphrase. So I see that that's too intense. I just add a little bit of water here. And oh, look at that. So we got ourselves a little bit of a rust streak there. We're starting to get some rust patterns around all of these little rivets here. Like so. And I just see, I've got all this stuff. It's just sitting out here, just sitting out here on the pallet waiting to be used. Oh, definitely have to put that on a t-shirt. Well, the other thing is the the magical, I think some people call them wapple socks or something like that. Those all started out as a way to stay warmer in the winter while I was painting. Because, just well, for several reasons, you don't want to be wearing long sleeve shirts while doing this. And I just absentmindedly went like that. And I went, hmm, that's a lot better than wiping it on my pants. And it's a lot more convenient than having to stop and wipe it on a paper towel. So look at look at our difference in our weathering already between front here and the turret ring and the back deck. So we're just in no time at all. Yeah, I'm not, that's uh, at first we were thinking just the you know the whole wapple sock T-shirt or sell wapple socks, <laughs> of course. Everybody's got them in their house. I have, I don't know how many pairs of socks with the heel blown out or the toe is ripped or something like that. First thing I do is slice off the rest of it. And now I've got myself a nice elastic wristband. So yeah, that's a nice, nice little difference between the two. Let's say we want to enhance the rust over here. Yeah, here we go. Yeah, Kathy's been having so much fun with her live streams on, on Twitch with the More Than Dice folks. I thought, well, there's got to be another way for me to do this besides just the Facebook Lives. And if this, if this works, I don't know, the way I was hoping it would, this would be fun because I could just be working. Just be working, doing my usual stuff but sort of turn it into lessons. I see the same thing here. I've been adding some of the brighter rust. I got my turret ring. 
start to have a little more life to it. And yeah, what we, what we started with was this. And this is how it all began, was like that. And now we've just got a lot more fun stuff. So, yeah, right now, uh, I can't really put a, a link up here now. But if you go to my Facebook page and you look for my Facebook Live videos, I think I've got three of them on making bases there. I know for the, on the blog, that's just wapeliusblogspot.com. That's the one thing that I do miss about XSplit is all that information could be up on screen for you guys. But go to wapeliusblogspot.com and go to the basing section of the blog. There are, I believe, 287 basing articles alone. And I, that's not a joke. That is not an exaggeration. There might even be more. Mosaic tile bases, bark and branch bases. Uh, let's see, what are we at? Some other examples of bases here. Let's see if I can find some for you. Yeah, can't quite find any right here, but check those out. Uh, also, the patrons on my Patreon page, what I've been doing is getting them some of the original painting pyramid videos because I love basing so much of the 53 painting videos. What was it? 12 of them were all about basing because, hey, I love basing. To me, it's almost like making little miniature dioramas. So see here on this turret ring, I'm just going to leave that behind. This this right here, I've seen tank guys do this in 14, 15 steps, which is, again, it's great if you're doing one 135th scale model kit or something like that. But, you know, they need to get something ready for a tournament. You don't have weeks for all that stuff to dry and everything else. Oh, definitely a basing addict. I'm not quite sure how the heck that happened either. It just kind of did. Let's do that. Now, this is where it's not so much about shading it. Looks like that's where you can see it. I'm just going to push this stuff around. It's almost like it's got some kind of stains on the top of it. So I'm just taking my sponge. So I just kind of push it. But I leave it behind. I can also... I think this is about number six. Yeah, this is the number six from that set. This one's dry. So I just I sort of scumbled that around. Yeah, I think you can, you can still see that. You can still see that pretty well. Now, I'm still waiting for that to dry a little bit. Now let, let's boost the process here. So I'm going to... Here's the where secret weapon paints are not just for weathering. So this is weathered wood. Actually, if you go to my blog and see today's post, you'll see it's actually it features secret weapon stuff, the exact same paints I'm using here. So this is one more pristine. One of those craft brushes there. Yeah, scumble is, I don't know how that got to be one of my favorite words. Well, used it a lot in art school. So we're, let's pick a spot here. Make sure you guys can see it. And I'm pretty sure this was some kind of air recognition symbol that they put on their tanks that would serve a little less as a bullseye than the yellow cross with the white outline. So here we go. And so what I'm doing is just painting some of this back in. I can put a little bit around here. I think by trying to get people to realize is you can go, it's okay to go back and forth. It's, you know, the wash doesn't have to be the end of it. Might even pick out a couple of those rivets. And let's work back into some of this stripe. Here's I can fix some of these edges here, if I think, well, I want that to be a little more precise. And here, here's another word, feathering. 
There's plenty of paint on this brush. This is not a dry brush. But I'm just, now, now it's back to the scumbling. It's kind of bouncing back and forth between the two. And you can see, even though this is a big brush, because it's well, sort of meant to be used for watercolors, it's got a nice, nice little tip on that. I've even used these to freehand Balkan, Balkan Ruse on like one 100 scale tanks. So let's see if there's any more questions. That the rust warrant, yeah, it was yellow. This one's the orange rust. I think the brightest one was yellow rust. And yeah, I use the a lot of the rust colors. I use those for my gold metallics. That's another reason why I got this guy out because you'll see how I use the same secret weapon paints to paint gold metals. I don't know if I'll get to them. Well, maybe on the vehicles. But this stuff, too, I've got a couple of Facebook Lives and some blog posts on this. You mix that metal medium, whatever whatever paint you got instantly becomes a metallic paint. It's fantastic. Someone told us about it years ago, and we kind of forgot about it because there wasn't much purpose. But once I started doing the World War II stuff, it just became more important and more viable. And in a second, I'll show you my color test figure for the Charlemagne division. Yeah, John, I'm, I've, I mean, this works practically almost, well, I won't be able to do it every day because sometimes the internet here gets dodgy and you know, Kathy's doing her live streaming stuff. She's doing, our next one is Thursday morning. No, tomorrow night, sorry. Oh, that's right, because tomorrow is Sunday. I'm thinking it's Wednesday. Yes, Kathy's in the other room painting. She can hear me from here. So if you shout really loud, well, she won't hear you, but you will explode my brain as you try to shout to her. And she'll be doing that again as, as the More Than Dice podcast. At, at some point, I'll be doing the Twitch thing. I just wanted to try this first. So let's get some gray. I can use, speaking of secret weapon, so this one is dark wood. It says wood, but let's unplug this, get a little bit of that out there. Ah, pfft, believe it or not, Kathy's using that exact same dark wood. Are you also using rubber highlight? Oh, yeah, she's, she's using this. This is another new favorite of mine. I really am loving this, this verdigris dark green. It's fantastic for, say, early war German uniforms. So I'm going to mix these two together, the dark wood and that rubber highlight. Uh, and Kathy's painting army pants right now. but not live on camera. So I'm gonna actually lighten this up just a bit. And all I'm trying to do is just, I just wanted to get back some of my differential. Yeah, uh, the, the Patreon is just James Wapple at Patreon. And that's it's the $5 pledge. You'll get links to let's see the mosaic tile base there is a what's the other ones there's like three of them now oh there's painting demon marble that's one of my favorites that was my entire tomb king army it was was the demon marble i love that i think i've got about five different basing videos links so far for folks because, like I said, there's the 12 original painting pyramid ones, but I'm making more. There's oil painting videos now. There's another video on how I painted my scratch sculpted objective markers. So, see, I, I want that to be green. So, see, I'm just kind of bringing back my gray. But 
See how it's kind of designed to be used in sort of a watercolory type way. I can do the same thing over here. See how that's that's kind of transparent. It's not it's not a wash. I'm painting. I can just remember way back in the day when we were first doing this, and just like everybody else, we were always trying to find paints that covered. You know, it had to cover everything in one coat because that's what you need. Because transparent paint is bad. And then we realized, no, transparent paint is good. You just have to kind of think about it. All right, where's that green? So I'm going to bring this back. Oh, hey there, Jason. How's it going? So what I'm just doing here is more of a workbench type thing. Just uh, I was showing people how I'd kind of do the initial dark washes on some of these using a few different secret weapon weathering paints. We're kind of bouncing around but between a few things. Here I'm going to do just a little bit of bringing back some of this green. This is the green part of the camo pattern. But again, see that scumbling thing I was telling you about? Just bringing that back. And again, because it's a secret weapon paint, it's meant to be translucent. So I'm not really highlighting this to end. You could almost... I don't even know if you can tell what I did, but it's just enough. So here's a here's a little bit more, just a little bit more. See, so touch those rivets a few times, and then leave it alone. Spin this around over here. Go back to my green over here. It's just about hints. You kind of give the indication. So again, on the top of this toolbox, on the stowage here, I'll just do a little bit, not across the whole thing equally. There's plenty of paint on here. You can see, see that's not a dry brush. It's that's that new that new phrase. So just scumbling that in. Same thing over here. In front of the turret ring, we'll lighten this up a little bit. So it's, you kind of start out with your basic shading, colors, whatever. You're sort of knocking them down with those initial washes. And now we can come back and it's not just about lightening things up. It's also about shifting the color. Uh, if you look at one of my old Facebook, well, there's about three of them where I paint uh, an M10 tank destroyer. I think I'm painting a Churchill in another one. And you can see where the green, some of it's warmer, some of it's cooler. The idea is just to get as much variety as possible. So let's compare that back deck to this turret. So he's asking about the difference between the 5, 15, 10. So the 15 and the 10s, those will get you more access to the Dark Sword miniatures. And I've got a Dark Sword miniature out here somewhere. Yeah, like these right here. These are kind of a special thing. I do about one or two of those a month. The, the $5 pledge, basically that'll get you, it's like a utilitarian thing. You know, you can see the basing videos. You'll have first crack at some of the other general painting videos. You know, I'll, put them up on YouTube. Like this one is set to public, but other ones I'll set to unlisted and the patrons will get to see those and it, it'll be a long time before they're ready for the rest of the public to see. But yeah, if you just want to kind of get get introduced to it and, and see some of the stuff, you can just do the five. You don't have to, unless you really love the Dark Sword figures too, that's okay. I would appreciate that. Uh, the other thing that happens too with the 10 15 dollar pledges <laughs> you have terrain features named for you in my battle reports and there's there's a bunch you have sparks peak canes ridge the mccoy marshes you have the green stuff world forest so now that this is dry i'm going to make this side like this side so back up with the engine grime 
there's other things too. Uh, I, I think I, I have it right in front of me, unfortunately. But there was a few other things I know with the tens and the fifteens. The other thing, oh, it's also unit pain. That's the other thing too, is for stuff like this. So, and then you also get first crack to see these things because those will be those can be more carefully kind of filmed, edited videos. Yeah, let's try. Where's my brown liner here? Let's get back into that. There we go. I just absolutely love this stuff. Once Kathy and I started using the, the liners and the clears, Kathy really got into the clear paints. Just kind of couldn't stop us after that. We absolutely love those. So here we go. So yeah, when, when you do your you do the five dollar pledge and i'll get a message from patreon and then i'll send you an email back with a whole bunch of youtube links i <laughs> because you would be new to it you'd be getting something like 12 or 13 links which would translate to about 26 hours of videos <laughs> or something like that 20 26 hours of painting videos to watch covering all kinds of stuff Basing, oils, acrylics, object source lighting, things like this. And here's another, this is another Facebook Live session that I did right here. Showing how to use fluorescent paints. So again, I'll be bouncing back and forth between a lot of different things. I'm going to do a little bit of this. We got our wheels covered. All right, now I need to go back to my Trax wash, which was this, the old rust. Old rust, some of the brown liner. I'll throw some of that back out there again. Boom. Oh, yeah, that's right. Well, that kind of dries a little bit. Here is, I'll show you this guy. So this right here. And the metals on this gun, that's that metal medium mixed with some of these liner paints that you're seeing. The blue liner, the brown liner. Because I'm sure you guys, if you're working with metallics, you've run into the same thing. You put your metallics on there and then you want to shade it, right? And you go to shade it. And as soon as you put whatever known oil or whatever wash you're using over the top of it, most of your metallic effect is gone. That's the other reason we stopped using that because we just we got frustrated not being able to maintain our metallic effects. Now that your dark paint is now a metallic, well, guess what? You don't get that. You get a nice dark, super dark metal tone, but you still have your metallic look. So see, I, I'm using the smaller brush here so I can get my tracks wash dug in right here. And if I need it to flow better, well, I guess I'll just throw a little bit of water in there. You could use like a Liquitex flow improver and a whole bunch of companies make flow improvers. You could use that too. It's really designed to be used. Just works fine with water. I'm going to scroll here, make sure there's no more questions. Okay, I don't see any. Because this is, this is going to engage my intention here for a little bit. As I do this, so you can see I'm doing two things. It's making that darker, but now I'm starting to get that that rusted look or oxidized look. I really don't like to say rust. I it's not so much that it's rusted. It's just there's really not a whole bunch of paint on these tracks at all, so there would be a a little bit of oxidation till it gets roughed up again, and that would probably be worn off. Then it would sit probably long enough for that to maybe happen again. I know there's always lots of debates about how much weathering to not put on vehicles, how much to put on. I just, I've seen vehicles, you know, like the restored 
World War II vehicles just driving around at a tank museum. And as soon as they take them out of the out of the shed and, and get them on the ground on a dirt road or on the grass, they, they, they just start to get dirty. Obviously, there was self-cleaning track mechanism, all that kind of stuff. But, you know, hey, they can get dirty. That's just kind of how it is. So back to my sponges again. I'll take some of this away. Take some more away. Grab a clean sponge. Let's see how much of that came off of there. Do the same thing here. Find myself on my little sponges to be a little more precise. Look at how much of that came off. Like that. Now, while I've got my rust colors out, you can see I, there is a method to the madness. So I'm going to get some of that orange out and a little bit of this. I think that's the orange rust, yeah. So we got those two out. And similar to what I did on the exhaust, get in here. It's, it's nice and watery. But this is going to be a little more, a little more delicate of an application. I'm just going to hit a few dots here. Not completely turning this to water, but I've really watered it down. And see how it's starting to go around those rivets there. Yeah, go down like so. Use this, my sock to absorb a little bit. And start to create some streaking. Let's see if I can. Yeah, it's, it's there. You can see it a little bit more now. And this this is why I have multiple figures going at the same time. I say, oh, you know what? I can really use some of that rust wash stuff that I made there. I, I don't need any more on this part, but oh, look, there's this whole other figure. And what's rust on one vehicle could be a fantastic color for a base on another one. And why not do that? So now that the wheels are dry over here, get this so you can see it. Just like I did before. See, it's designed to be very watery. There's not a lot there, but it does two things. You can see how it's darkening that down a little bit. This is the other thing I see see the model guys doing. Instead of making the streaks go down, that this these streaks go more of a like in a radial thing, like, like spokes on a wheel. Because these things are turning. Yeah, oh good, I got a clean sponge here. Let's see, I have an edge that I don't like. That has sponged a little bit of that away. There we go. Just sponged a little bit away. Now I'm pretty sure, at least as it was explained to me last night, well, pff, more like this morning. Once this ends, I think just like a Facebook Live, I can essentially have it render this and it will upload it to YouTube. So it becomes part of the collection, I guess, if you want to call it that. We'll find out. <laughs> Because when I click done, wherever done is on here. Oh, okay. There's the red end stream button. Don't press the red button. So see, I've got my orange rust here. Now that this is dry, I think you can see that. Not everywhere. And in a few places. Just emphasize, again, more of that 
tracks rust color just here and there turn it back upside down most of this is going to have dirt mud in it so i don't want to get too too much with the rust colors in there but all this is setting up the next stage which will be doing the tire section on these bigger drive wheels here for the early war panzer 38 track section here well, these always seem to rust and approach this in a very similar way to how we did the exhaust let's see it got a few different rescue it's all nice and watery move this off back where you can see it and poof some rust for you and oh wait a minute let's get that yellow nose of the orange rust again this is all the secret weapon stuff here get a little bit of that to flow into those deepest crevices but not mess with it and then just take it and i just touch it there and then leave it alone stop screwing around with it And obviously, well, there'd be some rust flowing in the undercarriage. So I think, yeah, I think you can see that reasonably well. Uh, yep, that's what happens. Done in a couple, couple little live videos. Yeah, that's once I heard that, I said, oh, okay. Because I love doing the, the Facebook lives. Fantastic. The downside is that for me they're they're eat well not super easy to find but apparently a whole bunch easier for me to find than regular folks because they really have to they can see my photos and see all that stuff real easy what they can't find easily is the videos they have to kind of go down a little bit of a rabbit hole to find those and as we've discovered people they're did the whole search thing that's not necessarily easy for them so the youtube stuff might just be easier for people to find those i think i can still when i went to start this it said share and i'm assuming that meant share it to well facebook twitter if you got it that sort of thing so here i just did a little bit of a lighter lighter treatment on the rust around these rivets do it again Yep, I got the right corner there. Now, the, the one advantage of Facebook Live, unlike this, Google Hangouts, whatever, everything is reversed. Because right now, this is my right side. But on camera, when I look at it on screen, it's left. So I move things, saying, OK, this will move it to where they can see it. And of course, it ends up going right off the screen to where you can't see it. So we're just we're doing a little more of the rust effects and i'm taking advantage of where where the green is you know green and red are opposites so that's going to give me yet another form of contrast that i didn't have so here we go oh look at this put that there i'm going to grab a dry brush what i'm going to do is i'm going to take some of these just going to dab away at the edges a little bit. And see how I'm just turning this into even smaller patches of rust. Or even taking it away a little bit. So I won't do one on both sides. I'll just do one here. Don't necessarily want to have a companion thing to everything. Just want to maybe do it, leave it alone. And you can see this is just, it has not taken a long time. Now, you know, I still have decals to do and other finishing effects, obviously. But when when you need, if you need this for a tournament or for, you know, you need to go to this game store and play a game that night, this will be dry and, and ready to go. 
And let's, let's keep going on these wheels. And that this is something new that I haven't really tried as much before is doing the sound kind of almost creating like these little spokes. There's another material I want to try with that. And that is some of these oil colors, the old oil. So this is another one I'm going to try. There's obviously oil, well, ironically enough, oil versions of this from Migamel, and I've got all those. But yeah, this is acrylic, and it can it'll just be dry faster. And just going after some of these, tone them down. I can have dirt, dust, all kinds of fun stuff in there. Let's grab a... I'm going to get some of my red rust out here again. You can see how things went from super crazy and hyper. Now it's a little more chill. Doing a little more precise applications. See here again, a few... If you let that let it go, don't do any more. Just a few shots here. That's it. There's just rivets galore on this thing. I don't want to go too crazy. Because it just it looks like it's been sitting in a river or whatever. Which, that's kind of ironic because in this battle report, in all likelihood, this is going to have to drive through a river. The, the next battle report, the whole idea is the British Operation Dynamo, they're they're gonna they've gotten the go ahead for that. They're gonna start start the the evacuation to Dunkirk and they need to get units off the board. And the Germans they'll start coming in from one corner, but as the game moves along, they're gonna start coming in from more places. even practically right next to the road. Now the there's going to be a French holding force. So here we go. See, I got that red rust. Put this in the center. And just going over a few of those rivets around that edge. Oh, it's the, it's the turn panel line wash. That's what people call that. I had, I had no idea. I'd look at the MIG ammo color. And just to show you that I've got them, let's see. I think I've got one here. Somewhere it is. So, yeah, panel line wash. I had no idea what in the world that was. We're sort of doing the acrylic version of that. And just a few applications. I've got some rust going around that ring. And try and move the camera in a better spot. Want a little more rust around some of these guys. Especially on the flat surfaces of the engine deck or in corners where well, obviously you would have some water collecting. So this is, this has been fun. Again, I, I don't know how much of this really shows up on camera, but I know it's there. So I really like to kind of beat up these turret rings. It's almost like a little bit of chipping there. So let's do, now that that's all kind of dried out a little bit. Let's grab something like this right here. So tire, tire black. Again, it's a secret weapon thing. Put some of that out on the pallet. Let's water it down just a touch, get it to flow. Just a bit. And Get that right, poof. So I could have done that initially, but I was doing so much 
with the various washes that I just said. You know, I'm going to go back in later because as I I always refer to weathering as it's like a layer of cake. Everything you do, right, right down to the the primer stage, everything else, it sets up your weathering. But then even weathering itself has the layers. You'd have to do stuff like kind of the rust and the grime and, and the effects on the metal itself before you're going to apply mud over the top of that. Or in some cases, snow. I'll grab you one of those in a second after I apply this on. Just kind of going around here. And when we flip this around, you'll see the difference that it makes when we see the other side. Make sure that's under camera for you. You can see some of those initial washes that I did, those are still wet. And it doesn't matter if I hit some other things here because, hey, going to be doing dust and mud and everything else. So let's flip this over and you can see the difference. So again, this is one of three tire colors that secret weapon makes. I'm just working my way around each each of these drive wheels. Uh, so much so much nice uh, nice and big compared to some of like the PZ3 and fours where you got a whole bunch of those little little ones to paint the rubber on. In a second, I'll, I'll bring out a few different vehicles. This sits here and dries. I'll bring out some desert theme vehicles and some winter theme. And we can talk about weathering a little bit here. So I'm going to let this, let that dry a little bit. And we're going to grab a few vehicles here. So let's grab that. Uh, and we'll grab this one. So We've got over here, the one that's right here, that's an Italian M1340. And we've got ourselves obviously T3485. And this was done in an entirely different way. This is actually done on a Facebook Live. I'm gonna try and make a recorded video out of this too. But this was actually weathering powders and rubbing alcohol. That's how I did the whitewash and then the snow. And so I've got these icicles on here. So that's all a part of the video. So here's some more. The mud effects on this is actually, I think I mixed my own. I just mixed oil paint and weathering powders together. But you notice there's a lot of rust there because there's a lot of water involved. Well, there's another. There we go. So this is a Semavante. Basically, the I wanted my weathering effects to be sun bleaching. So you can see there's a lot of different colors of tan. See out here on this turret, some of the tan is almost pinkish a little bit. In other parts, it's more white where it's been bleached. Over here, it's a little more yellow. Same thing on the Semavante. And obviously, well, more chips because it's sandblasted. So that's the two forms of weathering. You don't see a lot of streaking on these, just not a lot of water involved. Just the opposite. Here, you've got whitewash, right? And here you've got the engine heat from the engine melting and the exhaust melting the snow and ice, which is, again, causing more of the streaking. So when you do vehicles from different theaters, that's what's fun is you get to try out different forms of weathering. So let's put these out of harm's way. But yeah, these, the next step I'm going to do on these is actually the rubbing alcohol and weathering powders to try and get the sand down into the crevices. Fortunately, I can't quite reach the vehicle that's finished. It was actually a Crusader. But guess what? That was done on a Facebook Live. So there are our tires now. Those have dried out pretty nice. I'm going to go back to the turret here. I'm not going to put quite as much of the rust. Oh, thanks there. Appreciate that. 
Yeah, I've got. Oh, I've even got the what is that? The ninety fifty three, the anti aircraft truck, big freaking monstrous thing. It was real pain in the rear end to put together because it was resin and metal. Imagine putting the metal Warlord eighty eight millimeter on top of a resin vehicle with metal wheels. It just yeah, it was not a whole bunch of fun to put together. It's got a metal crew and everything. I've got the Simavante, the Lancia 90. Basically, everything was built on that same embassy, which I ran in chassis as the Czech built Panzer 35T, which I didn't learn until I painted one of the I painted the 35T. I think that was also painted in a Facebook Live. And I, wait a minute. These drive wheels look an awful lot like, oh, and they look an awful lot like this. It's like everybody used that same Czech suspension because that is a Hungarian Zrini. So somewhere I just dropped the brush. No, oh, it's this one. So I just I realized that I never actually shaded the underside of the turret, which is going to look magnificent to you guys because you can't see it. But there, that's it. Oh, yeah, the 9053, that's, uh, oh, what is this, Blitzkrieg miniatures, right? Uh, there's the there's the hull of it, which I think they just took the M13 and they, <laughs> they just stretched it out. So let's get our rust colors back out here. Uh, I know you had the, was that the L640 you had? I don't think I have that. But I have the Camaretto. I have the, was that the Semivante 47, I think. So I have to think, where would we want? Obviously, we're going to want some oxidization around that cupola there and some here. So let's get it where you can see it. A little more of that rust color there. Shazam. Just like I was before it sort of watered down. A little bit watered down and just gonna let that flow into some places. It's what I like about this, was it the old rust color is that it's not doesn't necessarily register as, oh, that's a rust color right away. It's not until you start using like the orange rust. Then then you start to, okay, that's in their minds, uh, it registers as a rust. This registers more as grime and streaks. And what streaks? The reason I've been piling this stuff up along the top edge is, see, this is a worn down brush. See how I've turned it into kind of a filbert brush here? The idea is I just take that and watch what happens. Just magically drag that stuff down. And you got yourself some streaks. A streak there, but again, like everything else, sometimes less is more. Oh, look, we're going to scumble. There's that word again. We're going to scumble some of that. Now look, the little L640s, and yeah, it's, oh yeah, Blitzkrieg. Yeah, that was, I wonder, now did, did you get that before the big holiday sale? Because that really messed up their whole production because they just got ha, blitzed with orders. And it, it seemed like they were, in the attempt to rush these things out the door, there was a little bit of, quality reduction i think mine i got them a long time ago the one thing i i did get from them which was i guess they're selling it again the stuka that thing oof, that had some weird stuff going on there was no decals i think that's other people have had that happen too they've gotten that kit with no decals the canopies oof, definitely not <laughs> transparent i guess they tried to use some kind of transparent resin not really the same as transparent plastic 
Uh, before, yeah, it's well, even like the Warlord ones, you know, the, that resin PZ38, when you look at the tracks, they're kind of kiltered at an angle because they didn't quite cast up right. It's obviously with the injection mold, boy, it's why well, you can do some really neat things. I've got the Char B set. Looking forward to working with those because I did one of the resin ones again and resin and metal parts. So remember, we were talking about the red versus green. So I get this where you can see it. And I'm trying to pick out a few of these rivets. See, since I have the streak already started there, I'm just in a little more, a little more of an orange tinge to that streak. And when I feel it's, it's too intense, I always have a little bit of that brown liner sitting around there that I can access. And again, I it's so easy to go, wow, I like that streak there. I'm going to put another one here. Oh, look, this is a good place for one. And next thing you know, it looks like it's been, I don't know, a paintball or something. So what I'm going to do is... I think I've got it where you guys can see it. Yeah, just a couple. It's not, it's sort of like chipping. I said I got too much paint on there. I got to take some away. Put some of that out there. Maybe just sponge some of that off. Do the same thing that I've done in other places. See, I'm just kind of. Dragging that, pushing some of it away. It's sort of like kind of hidden chipping. It, it almost creates the effect, you know, because the rust sort of stuff happens underneath the paint sometimes and then pops the paint off. It's not always, okay, the paint chipped away and now there's rust. I always have to remember not to put rust on the inside of the hatches because I've done that and even was stupid enough to put streaks on there and said, well, boy, that hatch must have been open a really long time in the rain. And I water this down. So I'm kind of setting up some streaking again. So I'm going to do this. I'm going to get rid of that extra paint. And then... So I'm just going to drag that along, but it's just so watery, you can't really tell. Now, I, I do enjoy working with the oils because I can do that at a little more relaxed pace. Like those two vehicles, the two Italian vehicles, that was all oil paints, all of it. Mostly just regular oil paints. So let's grab some of the gray paint again. Let's go back to our gray here and this is that old wood again not sure if kathy's still using that she's probably moved on i think uh, on, on sunday well tomorrow she will be working again on the large creature still i think for tomorrow's broadcast so Let's push this over where you can see it. And see how watery that paint is. I wanted to show you that. Because the other thing I like to emphasize to people is that washes don't have to be darker than their surroundings. They can, in fact, be lighter. So see, this is actually a curved piece. So what I was trying to do is just have this be a little bit lighter than this side or this side. You can see that was just kind of really transparently executed. I'm going to do the same thing here because there's a lot of funky little rust things going on. I don't want that much rust because it's so dark. You can't see the difference with the green. See that? That sort of lightened it up a little bit. Let's do a little bit more. And now that's more in line with this side. And I can always say I want a different kind of 
gray. Nice thing about having my colors out here. This is some of that brown liner. I just changed my color of gray. And sorry, sometimes if these are in a weird position, it's because I'm using my magnifier light. See, I'm just trying to emphasize the edges of where my green separates from the standard Dunkel Grau. And while I've got that, let's grab a smaller brush here. Let's mess with the tank driver a bit because I think, yeah, you can sort of see him. There's not as, you can't really see the pink piping that's on his uniform that normally the tank guys had, but here we go. Let's get some gray here. Try to make where you can see this and just like I was doing elsewhere. Working with this gray. And I'm gonna knock this down again, obviously where it's gonna be black, but let's show you you know, using some of the secret weapon paints for skin tones. Real quick, almost kind of a purple type color there. Going to get some shadows in the eyes here that aren't just my initial wash color. A little bit on his hands. Just working in, there we go. Some shadows. And you know, I do have smaller brushes. I've got the usual, I don't know what the Windsor, Newton, Series 7, all that kind of stuff. So let's throw a little more of a flash tone type color out here. Mix it with what we got. Make sure I am on camera for you. Uh, yeah, early resin's a little rough and ready. Rubicon, new resin vehicles. Now, uh, they've been doing a lot of stuff with like passengers for vehicles and stuff. I, I've been hearing that those, they're actually metal miniatures as opposed to plastic. Because I'm with the, like the, drivers and, and stuff and the tank commanders they've done are always they've been plastic in the past it's that last new rubicon thing i've seen in my hands was a while ago it's, it's been mostly warlord stuff lately there we go i think you can see that so i'm just doing fingers and it, it starts to come out now but because it was part of all of my initial glazes and washes and everything else, it just looks like it's part of it instead of, well, now I'll just magically start using these different colors to shade the face. You know, there's just, there's gray and green all over the place. Well, human skin has a lot of gray and green on it, especially if you've been not at home shaving every day. There, I'm, I'm using that same old rust color to shade the skin tone a little bit. And this is nowhere near the brightest skin colors. So again, I'm hoping that this, people can see what I'm doing here. Just working this on the back of his hand. Got to finish this part here. And if I don't see, so I think maybe the reason this is not, a, if it's not showing it as high resolution, it's probably because I don't have as much delay on the comments because it really, 
these are supposed to be interactive type things. Which some French tanks and a Citroen car. There's a there's a fifth. Oh, geez. Oh, yeah. Now I've got. I think I've got that. It's the P40 because I think once they got to a certain tank weight or, or tank size, like their medium tanks, they started to use the designation P instead of L. And it's a uh, yeah, it's like a 1540. Yeah, and it's uh sort of almost looks like like a cross between a Panzer III and say a Toldy tank, not a Toldy, um, Turan tank. That's it. And it was it was from Shapeway. That's it. It was a 3D print. Now I'm sure the Rubicon's kit will definitely have a lot more precise details on it. Well, obviously have some more options too. But I guess wasn't it? I guess at a certain point though, the Germans just took all that stuff away from the Italians because I think well, I wish wish I had that thing within easy reach. But I painted it in that uh, that really interesting camo pattern with the kind of the rust red and the, and the green, and it's sort of separated by the I think the white outline. Yeah, separated by white outlines. So I'm just see working in now some lighter skin tones, working in the eyes. And this is the same, I'll be using the same color here, not only to you know, work on the skin, but I'm going to be also highlighting the vehicle with it. So you can see everything that started to kind of look bright. Well, you realize now when you establish some context, well, what was bright wasn't really so bright at all. So while I got that here, Let's mix it with some of the gray. And let's catch a few of these rivets here. Especially, yep, yeah, right along here. And this is the typical pattern. You just, you're working along here. And what I would do, okay, so I'm working on the flesh tone of him. Uh, I'd be also working on, you know, these skin tones and all the other stuff at the same time. I just, I thought, since I also have my grays out here, I thought, well, I'll stick with, stick with this 38T here. Because again, I, I really sort of need it for tonight so that I can get started filming on that battle report, which conveniently enough, you can see the three previous ones right here on this channel. I've already done Aras. Ambush in the Ardennes, and the other one is Sickle Stroke. Now, they, they tend to be a little bit longer because, well, the one game, I forget which, which of the scenarios it is, but it, it went eight turns, so that was a little bit longer of a battle report. And as I do each of these reports, it gets a little bit easier. I've gotten... It's getting a little bit easier to edit them too. So see, I'm just taking that same gray. What am I wearing now to the other side here? Gonna catch some of these rivets. Because I've got you know, a lighter, a little bit lighter color here. I'm gonna take some of that same, I think it's Reaper Maiden Flesh. And let's pick out a few of these lighter rivets. Not going to do a lot with the edge on this. Not going to do a lot with that. With the hatch. Going to start trying to pick up some of these rivets and details on this cupola here. Poof. But underlying all of it is some of my rusty type colors there. 
I can leave those and leave those be, leave them intact. Just pick a few strategic places where I want. I'm just dragging this brush along and look, it's, it's highlighting some of those rivets there. Don't have to go crazy painting each and every single one. Because it really, it's just people won't. You can only put so much detail on something. Now, if they were going to stare at it for an hour, then, then they could see all the neat little things. But sometimes you just have to say that's good enough. You, you can just infinitely spend more and more and more time on something. And that, that's great. You know, if it's for a competition thing or whatever, you're obviously going to want to do that. But usually, everything we do is time sensitive. So right here on this, we're going to tilt this forward here a little bit. I'm just going to make an adjustment there. I want a little more of my gray to show a little less of the green. So I'm going to change. See, I'm just changing the shape of my green can. I was looking too much like a straight line. Just wanted to alter that a bit. And yet there's probably going to be a, a decal over that, obviously. Now, I think I also promised you a little look at that metal medium. So where is it? Here it is. So this is from Vallejo. I'm going to put a little bit out. Does not take much. Where's my, is my blue liner here? I'm just going to put a dot out. Again. That's all I need. And let's mix the blue. I'm going to do this. I always like to have these little blister things. So there's my blue liner. There's the metal medium. And as I mix these together, I think you can see how that Blue liner paint has a little more of a sparkle to it. And has some nice dark metallic paint, which we are going to now apply to our turret mounted machine gun. And there's the hull mount. I'm not forgetting that. There's your hull mount. So now it has kind of that bluish gray look to it. And the interesting thing is you want to lighten that. You just have more of the metal medium there. So we've made kind of a, let's make a middle tone. And this is, this is the interesting thing. What is it? Like mithril silver or something. That's the most common highlight silver. Well, this by itself by default, becomes your highlight. So I'm going to add a little bit of that maiden flesh here and change this up because I don't want it to be too blue. So it's lighter now, but it's still a, whoops, still a metallic paint. I think this is dry enough. So see, I'm just kind of applying this over the top. Because what would you do normally? Well, you'd you do it some kind of silver, whatever, and then put a dark wash over the top, and you would lose so much of the metallic effect. You would just kind of go back with more metallics and then go, wait a minute, that's too much. Then knock it down again and go back again. By the time you've gone back and forth a million times, you've wasted half an hour to hit something like this that should just take a few seconds. But you can see it still has a little bit of a gleam to it. Let's do that here. I set this up where you guys can see it. And just dragging that along. Leaving the end of the barrel just a little bit darker.
So now we've got both of our machine guns. And I'm going to go back to my smaller brush because I've got blue liner out here. Let's see if I can do a few more things on the face here or just on the tank commander. He's just kind of snug and warm for France 1940, but hey, that's how it is. Actually, just the last couple of days here, it was in the low 60s for the high. And just kind of do a little eyebrow there. Try and do an eyeball. Right there. Let's turn it around. Boom, there you can see it. It's a little bit of eyeball there. Do the same on this side. I really enjoy having the tank commander sticking out of the hatch. It's it seems like not too many people do that. I obviously I was at one point doing portrait painting for a living, so I don't mind painting faces on. I know there's some people that absolutely hate that, so they tend to not have the tanks opened up. So we'll just leave I'll leave him go right there. We've got him ready. So I can go back to here now and let's get some of my lighter rust colors back out onto the palette here. That's the orange rust. Here is my red rust. Little touch of that. And we can be more, go after some more small areas. I do a little more, a little more with the rust, a little bit lighter. And here we go. A little bit there. Just like before, and if I want to, I don't think I really want to have the rust spokes. I think I'd rather have it be just grime spokes there. So it's not going down into the crevices where it should. I'm just going to keep adding more water till it does. Back to this side, I can say I did a little more of it over here already. And the other thing too is I can't kind of mindlessly only do the bottoms of these with that rust because, well, again, these wheels are supposed to have moved so that that all wouldn't be in the same spot. So let me get some. There we go. need a little rust around the vision ports and around our machine gun mount here. And the other nice thing about the secret weapon weathering paints, when you really, really thin them down like this, you can see it's still having an effect, right? Still tinting that arrest color, but it's just so much more subtle. It's a lot more subtle. Can go back. Well, we haven't been back here since oh, a while ago. So let's see, how long is, oh, see, it doesn't say how long this one's, oh, okay, it's been two hours and four minutes. Just some of the things are in a different part of the screen than typical Facebook Live. So, again, well, I guess I should review. This is the first YouTube Live session that I've done. Normally, I'm doing this on Facebook Live, whatever. I just wanted to see, I wanted to see what would happen. I did this on, on YouTube, see how the, the sound was and what kind of weird things might happen with the camera. And yeah, most of the vast majority of the paints I've been using are secret weapon acrylics. There's been some Reaper stuff thrown in there too. 
And we started out, if you go back to the beginning of this, you can see there's other stuff that I was working on, like those, those rubber boats. But this also has to be done right along with those. So I kind of, once I got well into this, I just decided to kind of keep going with it. Well, let's try, where's that new stuff here? So this, this is another new thing that I haven't tried. It's uh, old oil, also from Secret Weapon. So that's, I'm going to put a little bit out here and let's see what it looks like. So it seems that's pretty thick. And I'll just get a little water here so I can thin it down. And there's a few places to maybe put that over here. Have it streak down. Let's water that down a bit. So it's uh, obviously it's supposed to be kind of semi shiny, and you could really make your own out of other like washes and water effects. But I'm gonna. So this is what I wanted to try out. So I'm gonna put a few dots of it here. I'm gonna thin that out. And I'm doing this. So it's um this is where I was talking about making those little spokes. So like so it may be not equally on every wheel, but I, I think I saw this on the interlaced wheels of a panther or something, and that seemed to be kind of neat. And uh, this is pretty much the first chance I've had. Because obviously, you know, you do the Panzer threes, Panzer fours. Those, those wheels, what well, we they're so small, you're not really gonna see it. But these are probably about the same size as those Panther drive wheels. And again, it's probably most of this will get covered up by, say, dust effects and mud effects which is something else I might get to here. Depending on how this will... I keep forgetting that this is acrylic. That's the other thing, too, is that I can... With the oils, while I do a lot of things in one sitting, there's just some stuff you can't do. You know, the decal stuff. Well, I could, even right now, put decals on this or... or wait a few minutes here and then do my dust and mud that, that's again it's everything has its advantages maybe disadvantages whatever so i'm just seeing again how this secret weapon old oil works just want to see what that is like so you can see, see, there's a little bit of a shine to that as I move that back and forth. And that's that's dry. So we figured that's what it had to be is, you know, let's put a little streak of that coming down this way too. Just for the heck of it. Obviously, the more I water it down, the less shiny it's going to be. So I just, that one little effect right there in the corner, maybe just leave that. And I'm going to put a little bit more of it here, just like so. So you can see, and you know, we did our track wash, but remember our metal medium. So let's go back to that. Here's more makeup stuff. I love these little makeup brushes because they're actually really nice filberts. Here's our metal medium. I throw a little bit of that out there. We need to tone that stuff down. Here's my engine grime. So we're going to mix engine grime and metallic together. And we've got now sort of a graphite colored metal. And you can 
tell what's going to happen next. We're just going to right over the top here. Again, not equally everywhere. I'm going to spin this around. Looks like you can see it. It just, just going to drag that over the top. Maybe in a tiny bit here on those tracks. Just over the top again. And I do this on the sides. Again, I got that it's engine grime mixed with the metal medium. And we're just going to brush this right over the sides. Same thing here. I get only here and there, not in every single place. We're just trying to get some different textures. Now, this is going to be a little more of the metal medium. See, I just I hit a little bit right there. It's in that one spot, not everywhere along here, just there, just to emphasize it a little bit. Because I'm just trying to create a little separation with the sprocket. Same thing here, and less here. See, nothing, nothing, then a little bit here. Move this down. And now there is your drive wheel. We'll do a little bit more on that to separate it. Touch more here. This may be where the light's catching it. Not so much on the underside. A little bit here. And maybe even a touch on our hull mounted machine gun. And where did my turret go? And maybe a touch on that too. And let's let's hit the barrel here, get a little a little bit of a gray on that. Where is my engine ground? I'm just going to use this. I mix it with a lighter color. We'll go back to that weathered wood. And yeah, that's that's about right. Get this where you can see it. And I can even use my finger to feather away some of that. Let's lighten this up a little bit. So just on the top part of the barrel there, I can rust this, do all kinds of stuff to it. Now let's get a little more gray here. We got a lot of dark, not a lot of gray. So back to my engine grime color. You can see that I've really been changing my grays. That's There is no one single gray color. Because as soon as you, let's say you buy a car and it's whatever color out off the showroom. Now, after even just a year, you've been driving that around or it's not sitting in your garage every day, the color on that's going to change. That's just how it is. Uh, yes, you're, the, the paint is baked on, whatever. It, it's going to change once the sun and the rain and the hail and the snow and the salt. If you live in Chicago, I'm sure in, in England, you don't quite deal with as much snow and salt as what we do here, say in Chicago. I, think I, was, I was talking with a buddy of mine from England, and I think we have more, well, we call them snow fighting vehicles here. I think there's more in the city of Chicago than there are in some countries in Europe. Because I think if we hook up the salt spreaders and the plows to the garbage trucks, puts us at around 430. 
which seems excessive until you realize there's about 3,200 miles of streets that would have to be plowed. So what I'm doing, remember that, that feathering technique that I was telling you about here? It's the same thing because it's not a dry brush. There's plenty of paint on there. All right, it's one of the properties that I like about the secret weapon paints is that they are, they're not super opaque. They're, they've got a little bit of transparency to them. I just, I wanted to get a little more shape on my hatch. And, and no, I'm not going to do decals on air because the words that I would utter while I'm doing the decals would almost certainly have me banned from all public forums. So I will do that in private. There, there's been, well, that Blitzkrieg Stuka that came with no decals at all, I ended up freehanding all of it, all of the insignia, everything. And it was easier to do that. It took less time than putting on decals. So the inside of this, usually it seemed like they used white inside the vehicles. So and this will be a nice contrast to our tank commander. So that's that same weathered wood. But again, not, not going to apply it super evenly because... That kind of gives us a little bit of pre-weathering. So now, remember that context thing? Our tank driver, he looks a little bit darker because now there's some light behind him. And we can lighten that up even a little bit more here. I think he's mostly on screen there. And see, we can even lighten that up a little bit more. There's more contrast there. I know I've, I've, I'm holding this in some really weird ways, but it's so that I can see it and so that you can see it. Let's just get a little more, a little more light there. I need, what the heck? I'm going to put a little bit on that barrel too. Let's maybe mess with. Okay, let's, let's screw on with some light chipping. There's any number of things. I've even got the acrylic chipping color from MIG Ammo. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to use some of my brown liner. That's a color that I kind of like for doing this. I'm going to put some of that out. A couple different ways I can do it. See how this has some spread out bristles? And just try and dry this out a little bit. And let's do it on my glove here. As I get some of the paint out of that. And I'm starting to get these little dots here. We can try some of that here. Just a few, few places. So that's one way we can do it. See, I got a few there. Gonna hit this corner. Hit that corner. That's one way to do it. Another way is I just took one of my sponges and I ripped it up a little bit. So that's even more fine. That's really good for desert stuff or anywhere that's kind of arid. Let's get a little more. I'm going to put some there on my hatch. And again, that's it's just the same sponge that I've been using for wiping paint away. Now we're going to use it to actually apply some paint. Do this again. Get even more. So I'm going to get that about right. And do a few little chips there thinking about places well where, where's the most logical place well around the turret ring where these guys maybe you'll be 
trying to grab at their tools here, maybe where they're stepping on the vehicle too. So remember, it's all, it's all about that layer cake. So there's a couple of these right here in some places. Here along our headlight hood. Maybe even here on some of the wheels. Here along the back. All right, so we've got ourselves a fair amount of, I'm gonna put a little more of the yellow rust on the turret to bring it in line with the main hull. And we'll do that right now. Here's my, that's orange rust. I'm gonna get a tiny bit of my no, that's red rust. This is orange rust. Just a little bit of that, not a lot. A little bit, and again, it's it's got to be kind of watercolory. Thin that down. Again, orient it this so you can see it. And let's just get a few. If it, does, if it doesn't flow, add a little more water. Let's see, just a few. Few spots right there. Let it sink down in there. See maybe on this corner, do it, and just leave it. And here, you know, uh, yeah, that's a good place for it. It would sort of coagulate here or uh, congregate there. That water. I'm gonna throw some down. And I can sponge some of that away. And now it's down into those crevices where the rust would, would kind of build up. So, wow, we're actually, we're two, uh, two and a half hours into this almost. I'm actually going to probably wrap this up pretty soon just so that I can, A, use the bathroom and, B, eat some food because it is now getting to be almost food time here so hopefully again i appreciate everybody that's watched it thanks john for sharing this here and anybody else that, that does the share thing you know the like thing you can subscribe to the youtube channel don't forget there's battle reports on there there's painting tutorials and there will there'll be more of these too now that i've done this first test one i just i kind of needed to just try it to see what the heck was going to happen. And I'm hoping eh, by this time next week to have the next battle report posted. Yeah, that's kind of my favorite thing. It's it's my reward for, well, painting stuff like this. Whoops. <laughs> Again, absentmindedly put rust on there. But, oh, look at that. No harm, no foul. It's gone. Gonna get a little rust on that barrel there. Or it might pick up. And also, like I was saying before, if you want to see other stuff there, you can be a patron on a Patreon page. There's access to more tutorials there. Let's hold these two up. And there you go. Let's get them like so. So thanks, thanks for watching, everybody. And I'll try and do another, another stream here. Where again, we're just kind of tackling a whole bunch of stuff at once. We got stuff like that. Again, we were working on things like this. But while we were doing that, we said, hey, We've got a vehicle here, and that needs to be that needs to get painted up real fast. So that's why we were working on this. So thanks, Ken and John, everybody that that stuck through it through the whole time, and I will catch you guys next time. Thanks a lot.